Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, so um, this one is going to talk about the uh, gene expression. So basically earlier, we talked about some like genetic phenomena. How is that single gene or multifactorial, multifactorial uh, impacts to cause the, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, phenotypic uh, traits. And uh, um, so we, 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 we studied basically everything about the relationship between gene and the phenotype. And then now we are going to look into some more detail about how are these genes uh, cause that phenotype. And the very basic one is the gene expression. So we are going to find like, like a, a, a more like a macroscopic, like visible relation, uh, like methodology that phenotype the express the uh, the visible visible traits and the possible gene, and then we know that there these genes. Um, there are different kind of uh, either the interaction or the combined effect to lead to that phenotype. And this phenotype can be multifactorial that a lot of genes contribute to that as well as the environment, right? So we learned that. Now we are going to learn about more detail. How is that gene go through what kind of process lead to, lead to the phenotype? And um, very important, processes that from that is we want to look into the very like a basic process that is the gene expression this gene expression uh, is the uh, process from the DNA the gene code it's right here gene expression from the DNA that the coding for the gene and uh, and uh, to produce the RNA uh, RNA then used to then R use this use to produce the protein. And the protein is functional stuff, right? Uh, beta cells produce the insulin, uh, a lot of um, uh, red blood cells produce the uh, hemoglobin. So those are function of the cell and that represent the function of the cell. And so, uh, so, so we would, Basically, in this in this topic, in this talk, we will cover this portion. We will cover these two important process: gene expression, including DNA to RNA. Through this process, it's called transcription. From RNA to protein, is called translation. So we basically will look into that. All right. So very basic that this is genetic code. Uh, in our Nucleus, so the cell contains 23 pairs of the chromosome, and uh, these chromosomes uh, contains contains uh, this chromosome contains uh, DNA, and the DNA contains a lot of these genes. Genes are used to produce proteins, right? So here are 23. So this is a very typical uh, karyotype that's showing us uh, these 23 pairs of chromosome. We have 22 pairs of autosome and the two pairs, two, two, one pair, two sex hormone, sex chromosome. That is either XY or XX. And that's the R contains the uh, genetic coding uh, located in our nucleus. This is one of the chromosome structure. Chromosome contains DNA and the protein. So it's not just DNA. DNA is a polymer. The monomer is the nucleotide. So there are four codes. This nucleotide has either containing the uh, G, C, A, U, right? Different uh, nitrogenous space. And so this is the polymer making up this DNA and that is wrapping around proteins. This protein is called the histone. 
So a chromos chromosome chromosome structure, including include the DNA and the protein. Okay, the protein is the histone to wrap to cut to, to to use to wrap this DNA polymer into a very compact like a structure. And we will use this DNA code when we need to express the gene to produce protein. We will unfold it, showing this DNA code and use the, this DNA code to produce the protein. And uh, that is the gene expression from DNA through transcription to RNA, through translation to protein. Now. So we will talk about these two process, transcription and translation. In the earlier in, in the earlier lecture, in our stereophysiology, we described the nucleus. So we kind of touched this one already, but kind of brief. We give you guys a concept about how DNA is trans transcribed to RNA, and that transcription is through the a pair principle. Uh, DNA code CGAT to CGAU, that's the code for the, uh, in the RNA. The, the transcription pattern or principle is C to G, G to C, A to U, U is unique in the uh, RNA. Uh, RNA doesn't have, doesn't have T, uh, so A to U and T to A. So that's the transcription, just write it over, transcribe is just basically copy it over. And uh, that use, these two use the same language. Uh, it's just one code is different, GCAT to GCAU. So that's transcription. And the translation is from the RNA to protein. So this translation translate is, uh, is a different language. So from the RNA, this is the polymer of the, of the nucleotides translate to the protein. Protein is the amino acid, the uh, polymer of amino acids. So they, these are two are very different language. So it's translation, like translation to a different language, like English to Spanish or Spanish to English, right? So that's that. And uh, so we will start by talking, looking at the transcription. So transcription is the first step of gene expression from DNA to RNA. So the purpose of that process is to produce RNA. The earlier uh, we talked about this uh, different mo molecule, we already learned that the difference between DNA and RNA, right? DNA is, uh, uh, has a double strand, RNA has only single strand. Uh, DNA use uh, the rocks, uh, right? Ribosome, ribosome, the uh, deoxy ribosome as the sugar, and the RNA use ribosome. Is it called ribosome? I forgot. Yeah, so, so the sugar part is different. Um, and so, so that's DNA and RNA. The oxy ribose, uh, RNA is ribose, I think so, yeah. Uh, all right, so that's the difference between DNA and RNA. The DNA is double strand, RNA is single strand, and the sugar part is different. Uh, DNA use GCAT, RNA use GCAU as their nitrogen in space. Um, and so, so this is a translate, the process is a tra transcription. Now, how does we do the transcription? This is the initial of everything, right? It's the beginning of everything. You must know that all cells have the same set of chromosomes, meaning that every cell, each cell, has the potential to become anything, right? So they can produce anything. They have the potential, they have the gene, they can do that. But, the, but not all produce the same thing, right? They, 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 they go through, the cells go through the uh, unique differentiation into a spatial cell to be fully differentiated cells. 
and those R cells only produce certain proteins. So how does we do it? How does the cell choose or chosen to produce a certain protein? How does the cell choose or ch be chosen to uh, express a certain type or certain certain range of the gene to express those genes. This is defined by a transcription factor. This is a transcription factor. So transcription factor is the messenger, is a stereo messenger, is a signal that detect the timing and the environment and so it's time to produce something, then this transcription factor, there are different types of transcription factor. Uh, anything that can regulate, can initiate gene expression that proteins are transcription factors. So this transcript, one transcription factor would, if there is activated, will come into the DNA and to search for that gene and to express that gene. So to cause the gene expression, first you need to transcribe it into RNA. And to transcribe that into the RNA is the combination of the transcription factor, TF, onto the location of that gene. So we will have the TF and the RNA polymers. This RNA polymers is the machine to produce RNA. So it's RNA poly means extension, right? One to two to polymerize. Polymers, this is enzyme to produce RNA. So we have the protein. He knows that this protein knows that which gene need to be expressed. And they get together with RNA polymers together to that location of the gene. They go into the beginning of the gene, this location is called the promoter of the gene. And then they will start to anchor on it and they start to produce RNA from it. So that's the beginning of the transcription. So here I'm showing you the transcription. Basically, we need to have two important uh, protein in the way come together to the initial to the promoter segment of the gene. This is, for example, here we have the RNA polymers and the transcription factor. They have to come together to this region. This region. This region is the promoter. What is the promoter? This is unique, unique code in the DNA. So DNA has four codes, right? GCAT. So it can be any combination of GCAT. Promoter is unique in a way it's, it has this unique TATA code in the location between a stretch G and a stretch C. And here's TATA. So G, E, A, T, A, C, 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 C. Like that. And this is a promoter. And that attracts transcription and the transcription factor and the RNA polymers to there. This promoter, this is also called a TATA box, T-A-T-A. -A. It's because it's very much like a G G G G T A T A and C C C C. We call this uh, is a, is a promoter, and the promoter is unique that it shows this Tata box there. So that's the initiation of the transcription. Once the transcription factor bring the RNA polymers together into the, into the uh, uh, promoter area, promoter segments of the protein, then these uh, RNA polymers will carry on the work carry on the job, continuously go from here to work along this DNA code and to produce the RNA code. 
So that's a figure like this one here. So we have the, in the beginning, in the uh, promoter segment, these two proteins come, can come together, uh, the RNA polymers and the transcription factor TF come together to the promoter. This promoter contains the Tata box, TATA. And then once they enter to together, RNA polymers receive the job, got activated, then these RNA polymers will continue going on through this DNA code. So we can see that launch on it and go through it to produce the RNA from it. So that's the transcription. So we will have the first RNA, right? This is the, uh, the beginning of the RNA, kind of like a, uh, uh, immature, of course, we need some more process. This initial segment, initial code is also called uh, uh, primate transcript, but we will know it later. So this, this first RNA will require some process. Two process will be done immediately. Is to, we have this RNA code, then we will add a cap and the tail to it, kind of to protect it breaking apart or attached to other things. Otherwise, this code has an open end, and that can be used to connect with the other RNA, with the other RNA. So RNA can be very unstable that one segment become extended in the environment because they can basically has the potential to connect to each other. So we need to kind of like a set uh, ending to both ends. One is to add a cap to it. It's called the RNA capping, mRNA messenger RNA capping, a cap to it. Uh, this is also called a five prime, five prime cap. That's because the 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 uh, the the RNA code is from so-called five prime to three prime. Five primes connects with the uh, phosphate. Three prime connect with this uh, oxidic uh, group OH. So this uh, five prime portion will 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 need to be capped. So this is a five prime cap. What's cap it? It's a guanine. So we will have a guanine. We will bring a guanine here. We will inverse this guanine. Guanine also has the phosphate. So this phosphate will connect with this five prime phosphate. So they will generate a triphosphate there. And so that way can prevent further connection from this five prime to other RNA. Because now the phosphate is embedded in quinine and uh, the rest of the RNA. So this, five, this phosphate is embedded there. And in the quinine, the end of quinine will attach another molecule is called the uh, methyl, methyl group, CH3, to the guanine. So this is also called the methylated cap. I thought I need to do, I need to. Maybe double check on this one, you see if this is correct. I think this is correct, okay. All right, so we did, don't, I don't think this one is that important. Okay, so that's that. So this is the, uh, the capping. And another part is the to add a tail to it. This tail is called poly A tail, uh, GCAU, right? That's the code for GCAU is code for RNA. And in the tail, we will, they will add an A to it, showing that that's the tail. So that will uh, indicate the tail of an RNA. So we have the cap and the tail. I also have the picture here showing you what it's like. 
to have a 195 prime capping. So before we have here, here this phosphate is the original five prime phosphate. See, every nucleotide has the phosphate. Phosphate has the tendency to connect with another RNA. So this phosphate is right here, and then we bring another uh, nucleo nucleotide to it, and uh, um, and, uh, and we reverse it. So these two phosphates will bind with this one phosphate to form this triphosphate link. This is a triphosphate bridge, and so so there will be there will be no further potential to further extend it, right? And this guanine, this guanine will also attach to a, a like a functional group called a, a methyl methyl group CH three to it. So this is the inverse connection to generate a cap to this mRNA. And uh, uh, we also can add A to the tail. So this is just an example of different kind of the RNA. Uh, it, can, it contains the exon and the intron that's in the RNA in the primary in the primary RNA code, it contains different segment. Later, we will learn about what's exon, what's intron, but this code will add with A to it, a tail. So this is the example of the poly A tail. Uh, so that's the first process to an RNA. The next process is called RNA splicing. So RNA splicing is to chuck away that intro. Uh, the entire code here, but some of that code we consider they are not used to produce the protein. So we will chop, chop it away. Uh, and that chomping away is called splicing to cut, to cut it away. Uh, intro will be removed. Exon will remain. So that's basically this process. The enzyme to conduct this process is called splicing thiosome. This is a, the, a, a spatial like, protein structure to work on splicing, splice thiosome. Uh, this is small, this the splicing is a small nuclear ribonucleoproteins or called SNRP, S N R N A R N T SNRPs. This is the one to conduct this splicing. That will make a prematured mRNA to become a matured RNA. This splicing can produce different isoform. This producing different isoform is a process called alternative, altern, altern, alternate splicing. So, so we, will, we will look into each one of these just to give you an overview. So basically that the original one is called a primary transcript then we will use that primary transcript. I think this is better to be RNA splicing. That will, yeah. The original one is the, the, uh, uh, a primary transcript. This is immature one and the premature one. And then it will be used to produce this matured RNA. <coughs> so the example is right here. This promoter, and here is the RNA. So we, we add a cap to it and the tail to it, or a tail. And here, this one, we can see that it contains the exon, intron, exon, intron. Intron is not going to be used 
So intron is moved away and the exon will remain put together with a cap to it, tail to it. This is the final product. This pricing can have some variation. For example, here is the alternative pricing. Alternative pricing So this, uh, the intron will be removed, the exon will remain. And that will make from the uh, pre, it's a pre, uh, it's a precursor mRNA, pre-mRNA. This pre-mRNA will become a matured mRNA. So this pre-mRNA is also called the primary transcript the primary transcriptor produced from the transcription of the DNA. The alternative splicing, because that splice, splicing can have different options. So these uh, SNRPs may splice it differently. Uh, we have, so same code can be used to produce different isoform of the protein. So for example, we have the code including exon one, intron one, exon two, intron two, and exon three. So intron will be removed. Exon will connect together. It will have the situation that we may only connect exon one and exon two. We may connect exon one and exon three because two is not included. We may have exon one, two and three. So it could be different possibility. We may have exon two and three only. Uh, so it can have different possibilities. So same code, same gene, same code of the, the gene can have different variety of the protein. Each of these protein is called an isoform. This intron is reduced, removed, and it doesn't use is not used to produce protein. We sometimes call it, it used to be called a junk DNA, but now we don't call it that way uh, because it may have some option function there. We just don't know yet because later we realize that the uh, the uh, the coded coding coding gene, the gene to use to code the protein is only about two percent of the entire genome. So, so if we think these are all junks, it means that maybe maybe it's not right. It, they have, may may have its own function. We just don't know yet. But intron is removed exon remain and connect together and the connection can generate some variety here and that it's an option to it's called alternative pricing alternative solution right and uh, this different protein is called different isoforms this is known to become a very important issue related to the disease for example <laughs> One of the disease is called uh, tauopathy. This is the production of the tau protein. And uh, uh, in a healthy PT, this tau protein can have different isoform, different splicing. And uh, the ratio of one type of, or one group of the isoform over the other group isoform, then, then can change 
the function in the brain and lead to the development of different type of the disease, in fact. Uh, so that, for example, uh, the known like mechanism is that alternative splicing to produce this tau protein uh, lead to different isoform. We, we now know in human have six, six type of the isoform and uh, the ratio of these six type of isoform can, can cause the, 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 it can increase the risk factor to produce uh, uh, brain degeneration, neural degeneration. So I'll just give you this as, as an example, showing you that different isoform in the brain of the same protein exist, and they have their own function. In this case, this is a pathological process that leads to the development of neurodegeneration. You don't need to know anything about this chart. You just need to have that concept that same gene can produce different isoforms and different isoform can have very significant effects into the cell development or cell degeneration. So that's the RNA process. RNA process basically two things. One is adding a cap and tail. The second thing is the RNA splicing. This splicing lead to a different isoform of the protein. Uh, so that increase the complexity or diversity of the protein can be generated from the same DNA coding. So this one summarize it. We basically inside here, the blue part is the nucleus. In the, in the nucleus, we have the DNA. DNA transcribed into the RNA, the precursor messenger RNA, including the exon intron, and uh, we can modify it a little bit. Uh, uh, and then uh, we can conduct. Through that, we will add a cap and a tail to it, kind of protect it. And then we will chunk away the intron and uh, uh, combine the exon back together. This can have different, can have an alternative splicing that exon A, B, C, can be combined in, may have different way that A with B without C or A with C without B. So, and that will uh, have a different kind of splicing. Example is here we have X on A, B, and C. So there is nothing excluded. This become a matured messenger RNA with a cap and with a uh, 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 a tail, poly a tail, sorry, poly a tail. And with matured one, it will flow out of the nucleus into its next stop. Its next stop is a ribosome into, out of the nucleus into a ribosome. So here showing you again, RNA moves into cytoplasm. Here is the cytoplasm. So this is the DNA transcribed into the initial or precursor RNA or primary transcript. So there are different terms, but saying the same thing. Then splicing, remove the intron, connect with the exon, produce this matured mRNA, messenger RNA, it will flow out into the ribosome. The next step is the ribosome. So, so here is the translation, DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. So we talked about this part already. Now we are going to talk about this part, RNA translation. And this one occurred, we didn't say here, but DNA transcription, this happens in the nucleus. This happens in the ribosome. So this portion, this portion is in ribosome. No fear, this one is in the ribosome. 
Perfect. What? And then we are going to talk about this one here. All right, so the RNA transcription uh, is to transcribe into the protein, as we already mentioned about. That transcription rely on three nucleotide as a group to serve as a code. Each codon will match with one amino acid. So here is the RNA. We already have the RNA. Three code used to produce a codon. G, sorry, right, GCU will be GCU, produce the uh, alanine amino acid, ACG, ACG will be uh, uh, three or nine as a second second amino acid. And uh, all together, it will be used to generate a connection of the amino acid, a polymer of the amino acid. If it's short, it basically is a pep peptide. It can be the peptide or polypeptide, depending on the length. So that's easy, right? Uh, three RNA. Nucleotide serve as codon to produce, to match with one amino acid. So that's that. Uh, just want to show in that translation, transcription and the translation are in different location. Transcription is in the nucleus. Translation is in the new, uh, the ribosome. In the, in the cytoplasm, outside of the nucleus, in the ribosome. And so let's look at the ribosome. Ribosome is an organelle. So that's why we, in the very beginning, I would, I give you a, a, a kind of like a, a overview of this cellular physiology. You need to have some idea about what's in the cell. And uh, I also give you this lecture about this molecule you need to know the basic about this nucleotide. So we have that and we are going to use it here. So this ribosome is a type of the organelle. This is a non-membrane organelle. It has two parts, two subunits. These two combine together, then RNA go through it to do the translation. So this is a translation process. We have the ribosome, the two subunits combined together, messenger RNA go through it. And what do we do? What we do here is we need another player that is called transfer RNA, tRNA. So tRNA is the one, is, 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 is another RNA. Its function is not to generate the code. Its function is to serve as a carrier to kind of like link messenger RNA and the amino acid together. So, so each tRNA carry a code. Uh, it could be the ACC, CUUU, ECG, something like that. Each code, these tRNA are freely floating inside of the cell. And uh, in the one end is a code the other end is the amino acid. So they, they, before they do their work, they already have the, have the amino acid matching with this code and they are floating around. And so when they see these, when they are needed, they will come in, AAA will go here to match with GCAU, UGC, so UUC, UUC, maybe it's right here, UUC, it will come here. And then the UUC happens to match the code. 
PhD right you you see uh, to connect with this uh, uh, I, my, my, my vision is not that clear, but PhD, I mean, essay right here. So it's already found with this TRNA. And, uh, uh, and so, so this code will bind here and bring the amino acid together. And then this amino acid will link with the previous amino acid and the TRNA will go away and the two bind with another amino acid that freely floating around the amino acid. So tRNA is the one to bring the amino acid and the link this amino acid together. And then by doing so, they can generate a polymer of the amino acid. So, um, so this uh, uh, tRNA will bring this amino acid together and connect together. And so that is the function of the tRNA. Now we learn that there are so, so many different types of tRNA, the messenger RNA, provide the code to translate into protein. But there are also some several other RNA to work on several other things. tRNA is very important to work with the ribosome and combine with the, to, to use the code of the messenger RNA to produce the protein. This whole mechanism, this whole machinery is called translation apparatus. So that is the apparatus in the cell. And we can observe that it has the functional ribosome, meaning that two subunits are bind together, messenger RNA go through it, tRNA come over it to produce the protein. So let's look at this uh, tRNA. Here is a tRNA. tRNA is an RNA. So it contains GCAU, the code to it. So here, here you can see if we lay it out, it basically from five to three, five prime to three prime, we can see a lot of GCAU, GCAU, GCAU. But they are kind of unique that we know that GCAU are attracted to each other so this line will not maintain us as the straight line. They will very quickly fold together because these are attracted to each other. It's very much like the DNA have, uh, have uh, a double strand. These two pair will start to make with each other and just form together. So it will, this design will make it form a shape like a uh, uh, clover leaf shape, clover leaf shape. It's like this one here. It basically has a loop one, two, and a three, a three loop. And the, and the five prime and the three prime are aligned to the very opposite end, very same opposite end from the loop two. So the in this, uh, in this three prime, three prime always end with this code called CCA, this CCA code. This CCA code <laughs> will bind with an amino acid. The chosen amino acid will be chosen to match the code here, AAG. So depending on what AAG is referred to, which kind of the amino acid, it will bind it. But the, th the three prime M is always CCG. So CCG, CCA, CCA tail is the one to find a specific amino acid. And the, in the opposite end, in the loop two, here we have it, this is called the anti-codon, 
means that they are opposite to the codon. So for example, AAG. We don't have AAG. For example, the anti-codon UAC is the one to serve the codon AUG because A to U, U to A, G to C. So whatever the messenger RNA, the codon in this, here, this anti-codon basically provide a paired base for this codon. So anti-codon and the codons, their relationship is very much like DNA double strand. G to A, A to G, G, C, A, U, G to C, C to G, A to U, U to A. A to U, U to A, G to C, C to G, G to C, G to C, A to U, U to A, G to C, U to A. So the anti-golden always serve as a best pair to these codons. And uh, in the CCA end, in the CCA tail, this tRNA using this tail to carry an amino acid. So that's that. So the tRNA here, you just need to know two things. It has three things here, three things. Here, the shape, the shape of this is, has three loop, but you don't need to remember three loop. You just need to remember it's like clover leaf, clover leaf shape. It's because that, that basically, it was a string, but because AUG C, they will try to kind of very quickly fold together and form this shape. This shape is designed needed because in the loop two, in that further end, it will show this anti-codon. This anti-codon will match with the codon in the mRNA. And in that CCA tail, is a CCA tail is the one designed to attach to an amino acid. So that's that. Let's look at this code again. This is called a genetic code. This genetic code is very interesting because this genetic code is universally true. Uh, RNA to protein used based on this code is universally true. Why? You tell me, I don't know. But that's, that's all the living, living stuff. Maybe it's evolu evolution, right? All the living stuff coming from the same origin and then they basically follow the same code. So either way, they are universally true, okay? All right, so, um, so this code is called genetic code. Uh, the reading of this code is from the inter, inner to outer. U, A, U is one to code the tyrosine. U, G, U is used to, to code the uh, cysteine. So that's a code. This one also gives us uh, two important things. One is that we have many code that serve the same function. For example, UCU, UCA, UC, UCU, UCC, UCA, UCG are code the same protein. So this gives us a code that uh, this third position can be variable. So if say in the situation there's a mutation changing U to C, C to A, A to G, if that location is in the third position of that codon, it won't change anything because it will still produce the same protein. This is called due to an idea called the uh, synonymous codon. Synonymous codon means that the third position of that codon uh, can be different. 
And uh, uh, if these different codons generate or match to produce the same amino acid, these codons are called synonymous codon. If these codon in produce different amino acid, it's called non-synonymous codon. But we have a lot of synonymous codon. It also, it always happens to be the third, third position. So this third position can be flexible. And uh, this is also called a wobble position, that this third position can be flexible. That doesn't really matter how accurate it is. We have the we have the tolerance to be inaccurate and still produce the same protein. So this is just a terminology here. These are synonymous codon that different codon can produce the same protein, and these different codons happens to be at the third position. Okay, this is also called wobble position. We also have something called start codon and the stop codon. Start codon always aug, augment, A-U-G. And the stop codon is ugly, okay? Anything ugly, A-U-G, ugly, oh, ugly is a stop codon. So only one start codon, A-U-G. And if we look at the A-U-G, A-U, G is a code to code uh, my methionine, methionine, met, methionine, or methionine. So the first amino acid in the protein is always the met, methionine, A U G, or A U G. And uh, uh, the ending will always be ugly. Ugly. A U A A A U A G U A A U G A is the stop. So we have three stop codon or stop by U is U A A U A G or U G A. So we have the start and the stop code. So here is the messenger RNA. It has very long, but we don't use all of those. We start by the first AUG, sorry, U, AUG. We start by the first AUG that is show. So the AUG is the star codon. UAA, UAG, or UGA is the stop codon. So let's start in the stop. Knowing that we have the start and the stop, we will know that there are region that we don't use, okay? This region is untranslated region. Uh, one important one is here. This is called the uh, untranslated five prime segment right here. So here is the picture showing you the uh, gene expression. Here is the DNA transcribed to RNA. Here is the RNA moving out translate to the protein in the cytoplasm. And here showing you the picture that the initial coding is AUG. Uh, we'll bring this tRNA, bring the uh, MET to it and uh, to begin the production of the uh, protein. Uh, it goes through this ribosome. Ribosome will continue moving along to code this protein. And, uh, and in the beginning, this portion is the D, this is the uh, untranscribed, that's before the AUG. This one is also important, even though they are not used to translate, to translate the protein. This is called five prime uh, untranslated segment non-translation segment. This is also called the leader sequence. This region direct, directly upstream from the initial codon AUG, 
This is called the leader, sec leader sequence. It's also called five prime untranslated region. Five prime untranslated region. And this is important in a way that this is very, uh, it, it basically is a, 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 the function is to regulate translation. Another important concept is called reading frames. So say we have the code, we have this code, uh, but depending on how we see it, we may see it as from the U to word, will be UGC as a code, CCA as a code, AGA as a code that will produce the sequence very different from if we see AUG, CCC, AAG. Or if we shift a little bit to, 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 to code away, we will have GCC, CCA, and GAC. And you can see that protein will be totally different. So that reading frame is important. This is especially when, when there is a mutation to add a code, not just a codon to add a nucleotide or missing a nucleotide. That will make the entire reading frame to be shifted. And, uh, and uh, in the nature process, this will be avoided by setting a specific start coding. So we will not, if we have this coding, if our cells see this coding, they will not be confused by how to start, how to start reading it, because they will see the AUG as the start coding and they will code it this way. There will be no confusion. The first protein will always be uh, met. That's enough. Uh, so that's that. But we got the idea that this is called the reading frame. Reading frame, the shifting of the reading frame is very critical uh, because one code, one, one nucleotide shift, either the forward or backward, will make the entire reading totally messed up. So this one summarized the entire process, the gene expression, including the DNA to RNA, it's called the transcription. RNA to protein is the translation. We have the DNA, the template strength, to code the messenger RNA. Three of those will be used to produce the matched, the amino acid. This amino acid, this will go through, this one is happening in the Nucleus, this one happens in the ribosome. So ribosome will, will bring the, um, will bring this tRNA together and uh, uh, will, will, the tRNA will match with this, with the anti-codon will match with this codon to bring the matched amino acid together and the amino acids are linked together to produce this polypeptide and to produce the protein. So uh, single, single messenger RNA can produce tons of the protein. The ribosome goes through it, produce the peptide. Here we have the uh, chevron peptide because we, we, we want to keep it stable and then this will away and then the protein will be chopped off and to, to, to be processed further uh, to produce the, uh, to fold it and to produce the protein. So just showing you that, that the single, single messenger RNA can use to produce multiple protein because ribosome can go through it over and over. And uh, there can be, once it's moved over, the other one can launch on it and move it, launch on it and move it. So single messenger RNA can be produced tons of the proteins. All right, that's it.
Let me know if you have any questions. Let me see, I can stop recording.